Let's go. Let me, hi, I'm Ethan. I wanted to tell you about how you guys met. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys, so, so everything looks good in terms of the, uh, the interpreter. Just let everybody know. And we will be going live soon with the webinar at 10. Just to let the public know on social media, we are live, as well as the um, everybody on this Zoom call, we are live.
Welcome everyone to the Town of Miami Lakes and its Economic Development Committee uh, presents Bricks to Clicks, Expanding Opportunities. On behalf of the Town of Miami Lakes and its Economic Development Committee, we would like to express our sincerest gratitude to Bank United for sponsoring this webinar. And it is my honor to in introduce Chair Jerry Letrento, Senior Vice President of Senior Executive Vice President of Retail and Small Business Banking, um, Bank United. Well, thank you uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, um, I wanna thank the Town of Miami Lakes uh, and the Economic Development Committee for putting this together. Uh, you know, I, I, we, uh, we, we have offices, uh, obviously our corporate office in Miami Lakes um, and, um, and our, uh, our headquarters for our company. Uh, and many of you know, um, my, uh, my colleague, Steve Bremo, uh, who is our market leader uh, in the Miami Lakes area, who's very active. Uh, and so we just appreciate um, the opportunity to be a part of this this morning. Um, I think we've got an excellent speaker, uh, Orlando Espinosa, who I'll introduce uh, here shortly. Um, but Bank United is proud to, uh, to partner uh, and sponsor uh, this event, um, which we, uh, we trust will be educational and informative, informative um, for small businesses. Uh, small business is a big part of what we do every day at Bank United. Uh, so uh, I, I'm going to just share a few thoughts um, before I hand it off to Orlando. Um, you know, digital transformation is something that um, we've talked um, and been through over the last several years at Bank United um, very, very, uh, in a very, very heavy way, um, moving, um, if you will, through what many would call um, the fourth industrial revolution. Um, you'll see in Orlando's presentation um, some great examples, uh, and it's so funny, we talked before this uh, I've shared um, similar examples in presentations of companies, uh, unfortunately, that didn't transform um, and not so recent, but, um, but Kodak and Blockbuster, uh, you know, are companies that, um, that didn't make the transition uh, into um, sort of uh, uh, the shift of the new economy um, and they missed their windows. And, and I think you'll see, um, you know, in our discussion, uh, some of the reasons why. Um, a lot of it was around the mindset of management and the shifts that management didn't make at the time um, that they should have. You know, right now we've got an intersection of, um, in my view, artificial intelligence, the internet of things, big data, and cloud. Those four, um, you know, those four rocks, if you will, are all intersecting uh, to create what is a very different economy. Um, and I think the COVID-19 crisis has accelerated all of that. So, you know, I, I think um, a specific example to Bank United, um, we stood up a process for uh, the PPP, the Payroll Protection Program, which fortunately we were able to help and save, you know, a, a, a lot of jobs um, and, and um, over a very condensed period, um, we did, you know, uh, almost a billion dollars of PPP loans that platform was stood up in, inside of really um, 10, 12 days, which is a great example of agile um, development. And, you know, we work hard every day um, at our company um, to be more digital. 85% um, um, of our workforce, um, other than our branch offices, is remote and has been for some 90 days now. So, you know, I think the key to, um, you know, this um, surviving this COVID uh, crisis and the key going forward, so many businesses is going to be to have more of a digital mindset. Um, if there is, you know, no going back. I think we're all in the new normal. Um, and I'll just end my comments with this. Um, you know, the sort of traditional mindset was um, that you wanted to incrementally improve current processes and do things a little more efficiently. Well, what's modern is that you have to automate tasks and augment human skills to transform what you do in the future. You know, before sellers were sort of in control of the sales cycle, certainly speaking from a small business standpoint, the best seller would be the model for the whole sale team. Well, now buyers are really in control of the sales cycle. 
the buying experience should have to be exceptional um, in order for you to be competitive. You know, growth used to come from incremental improvements and consistent execution. Now it's coming from dynamic intelligence and agile execution, like I just spoke about. Uh, social selling on social networks um, used to be about getting likes and followers. Now social selling is about every sales professional leveraging their networks for warm introductions and referrals. And Steve Primo's a great example of that, a great ambassador for our company. Um, you know, the last thing I'll just say is that human intelligence um, traditionally was sort of fixed. Well, now with AI and with machine learning, um, augmenting intelligence, it really uh, is about, you know, bringing that highest value of opportunities. Um, and there are so many tools and we uh, as a company are, are using many of them uh, to really drive our sales activities and our performance in the future. So um, that's just a quick uh, snapshot of my view of sort of digital transformation and all the things that we need to do to be prepared to not only survive, but to move ahead in this economy and, um, and be competitive as, um, as a small business and, and frankly, as business leaders, uh, it's about mindset and shifting that mindset. And I think tying into, again, what Orlando Espinosa um, of uh, Medio Media is going to speak to are a lot of these mindset shifts that I think, um, you know, will need to occur for um, for you know, you to be um, uber competitive and be successful going forward. So again, we're proud to be a sponsor um, today and I, uh, I look forward to the presentation and any questions that you have out there. So Orlando Espinosa, um, you're up. Listen, and, and thank you, uh, Jerry. And I actually wanna thank, you know, definitely uh, Bank United uh, for uh, sponsoring this, the town of Miami Lakes. I wanna thank uh, everybody that's actually been involved in all of this uh, in helping putting it together and so forth, and definitely the Town of Miami Lakes Economic uh, Development Committee uh, for your, all of your hard work. So uh, without further ado, um, normally we would actually share the floor. I think now we have to share the screen. Um, I've got a lot of great content information, and I'm the type of person that what I like to do is um, I'm an educator. I, I love to educate. I, I actually teach programs for, for different organizations. Uh, for the uh, SBA, their small, their actual uh, emerging leaders program. Uh, the other thing is uh, with the SBDC, the Small Business Development Center. Uh, and the reason why I share this is because I'm a business owner. I get it. I understand the value uh, of expanding knowledge. And I think that one of the things that we're experiencing right now with a lot of businesses is, is how do I pivot my business during uh, COVID? Um, how has my business been affected? And I think that one of the main things that we need to focus on is that you have to look at, if you have a brick and, and mortar, um, how do you actually get involved in more of the clicks, more of the e-commerce in order to expand your business? I know that there's a lot of businesses out there that have been struggling, but I will be the first to say that there's a lot of businesses that have been thriving uh, one thing I will encourage everybody to do is definitely to change your, your mindset, uh, change the way that you think. Um, for those of us that are um, actually watching us uh, on the different uh, platforms, uh, please, if you have questions, you can definitely post them um, in those chats. Um, uh, and if you have a question, uh, also post it in, in the uh, Zoom chat. Uh, the overall goal of what we want to do today is pretty much to expand the way that you think. Um, I've spoken to a lot of businesses that they are at a loss. Uh, for how to pivot their business. And I will tell you right now that this is a new norm. Um, I don't know how long this is gonna happen, what changes are made, but uh, are gonna take place. But I will encourage you to actually start thinking uh, beyond the norm and, and see how you can actually start using the creativity. Um, one of the reasons why I'm an entrepreneur is that I love to create, I love to build, and I love to, to implement new things and new ideas. And a lot of the small businesses that I work with, uh, that's the focus of, of, of what we do. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about uh, bricks uh, versus clicks. And, and you know what? I think that one of the basic things is uh, visually, I, I like to see a lot of images. I'm a visual learner. And I know that a lot of business owners also love that. Um, I'm also more of that type of person that let's get things done. Let's go to, to uh, quickly to the jugular as opposed to beating around the bush. So there's a lot of content in here. I'm not gonna go over everything. We'll make the uh, presentation available on the uh, Town of Miami Lakes uh, uh, website. So you can definitely you know read it at your own pace. There's a lot of great content. I just wanna make sure that as we move forward, 
that for a lot of you that what you sit back and you say, well, listen, I have a brick and mortar um, and I don't know how to actually start selling to, to customers online. I don't have an e-commerce site. Um, I don't know how to bridge the gap uh, collectively because before um, it was a competition. Um, well, I have a brick and mortar and all of my customers come in and buy and they leave. Then those that have an, um, a click, pretty much the e-commerce people buying online, it would just be people buying online and how they would actually just get the uh, products uh, into their home. But one of the things that we're looking at right now is things are, are quickly shifting and changing. Um, so here's a couple of things that I definitely want you to take into consideration of, of uh, ways to grow your business. Um, if you do not know who your customers are, if you never took the time to come in and actually do the research during this time, take the time Talk to your customers, communicate with them, those that actually are buying from you, um, observe their buying habits, how, how often were they buying. Um, you definitely need to look at trends and how things are shifting and changing. Um, unfortunately, a lot of businesses, uh, what they do is that they really don't look at what's happening around them, um, even when it comes to your competitors, um, and you have to evolve. If you don't evolve, you are going to stay stagnant. Um, and definitely um, when you start looking at the competition, I would not only look at the competition within your own industry, but look at competitions with other industries. Um, and, and one of the key things is that I know that what COVID has done uh, during this time for a lot of businesses, they actually generated a new revenue stream. They went in and decided, hey, I can create something that's totally different or something that actually complements my business. Um, and, and the one thing is, is that a lot of businesses have the mindset, well, we've been doing this for so many years. Well, well now is an opportunity to implement things that you wanted to do that you hadn't thought about. Um, now's a great time to listen. I would encourage you if you don't have other business owners, other people that are like-minded that you can actually sit down and talk to, I would encourage you to listen to other people within um, the business. Listen, this is South Florida. Uh, we've got, we go through hurricanes, you know, and, and um, we actually survive. So we'll survive uh, this as well. It's just making sure that we take the time to, to help one another. And one thing I didn't add there, but the best way that I've been able to grow my business was definitely to pay it forward and to help other people uh, to move forward. So one of the things that we see people now with um, everything that's going on, you can either create an opportunity or you can fight for opportunity. And everybody seems as though they wanna fight for something. And I'm of the mindset, I'm gonna create opportunities. I'm gonna look at something visually and say, you know what, we can actually create something when it comes to X, Y, Z. And one of the things that's happening with a lot of businesses is, is everybody's just fighting for the same opportunity. So I wanted to actually highlight a couple of businesses that actually, they created their own opportunities. I'm not gonna go into too much details with all of them because a lot of these companies we actually know from Apple to when Apple started and they actually created um, the iTunes store and you know the MP3s and, and everything or the MP4s. And, and they just started evolving into you know the Mac, um, the uh, iPhones and so forth. I don't know what version of the iPhone we have right now, I don't know, 27, 30. Uh, but when you look at that, you look at Lego and Lego actually, when they started, you know, they've got those nice little uh, pieces of, um, of uh, items that actually hurt when you step on them. Uh, but keep in mind that Lego, now you see Lego with the Lego movies um, and how actually they've actually gotten to mainstream. Um, another one is McDonald's. When McDonald's started, the evolution was they started creating their own opportunities. They were selling burgers and fries. And now when you think of McDonald's as franchise um, their number one uh, way of making money is, is, is in real estate because they buy real estate. They evolve the same thing with Amazon. Um, listen, right now people are spending money because as I sit in my home and I look out the window of the kitchen, I see nothing but trucks of Amazon trucks, um, Federal Express, you know, the, the post office, and they're actually coming in and, and people buying. So people are still buying. They're just having them ship items to their house. Um, and then you have Samsung. Samsung's one of my favorite stories. Samsung actually started in 1934 in, in uh, Korea, and they were an import and export of fish, dry, um, dry vegetables, and noodles. And in the uh, late 60s, 70s, they actually started creating what it is now. They've got smartphones, technology, everything that's got to do with technology. But that is a company that actually saw an opportunity 
and they created that opportunity. And, and a lot of these companies, what they're doing is that they're pushing the envelope and doing more and more things online. Um, now, here's a company that actually was given an opportunity and, and Blockbuster, you know, in this day and age, I think that there's a Blockbuster left in Oregon. I actually found my Blockbuster card the other day, but every Friday it was going to Blockbuster, getting a movie, uh, ordering pizza, Chinese, what have you. But the main thing is, is that if you look at the relationship, so, so Blockbuster and, and Netflix, so Netflix actually went to Blockbuster and met with them. And what they wanted to do was they actually handed Blockbuster uh, the keys to continue with their success, but they didn't have the vision. They didn't have that mindset. Um, and what they wanted to do was that they wanted to be Blockbuster's online um, actual, um, pretty much their, their, their voice uh, to promote and sell. And one of the main things that happened was that Blockbuster did not see the vision. They were not willing to, to deviate because they were actually cornering the market. Um, and their numbers looked extremely well. But what happens to a lot of business, if you're not ready to start pivoting and to start shifting and changing, what's going to happen is you're going to get left behind. And I think that that's what's happening to a lot of businesses. They're trying to figure out, you know, Orlando, what's my next move? We've been selling, you know, what for years we had customers coming in to the doors. I, I, I've heard a lot of companies telling me that this year was a phenomenal year for what it was that they were doing and what they were going to do moving forward. So, so where a lot of businesses actually had to come in and figure out, if you look at Blockbuster and Netflix, this would have been a, a perfect relationship that they actually would have had with an actual brick and mortar and um, actual online retail. And what they did was that Blockbuster did not see the vision. So if you look at e-commerce sales right now, and like I said, I'm not going to go into too much of the uh, content that's on here because the uh, presentation is going to be made available, uh, but it makes sense right now. If you're not online and you're not selling online, um, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice because as individuals, we have been conditioned to come in and just order things online. Um, during this time of COVID, it forced a lot of people that normally we're never doing e-commerce to go in and buy online. I'm still the type of person that I have to get out of the house and I have to go and buy. So, so imagine a business that actually is a brick and mortar and you're giving your clients and your customers an opportunity to, to buy from you directly and maybe even pick up or even ship and so forth. So those are things that you definitely have to start researching now because as consumers, we're, we're spending more time at home um, and we're actually got that comfort level. Why? Because I work from home. I've been working from home for years. So I had to get things delivered to my house in order to make sure that I can continue doing the things that I needed to do. So if you look at retail numbers and where they're out right now, it just makes sense to be online. Uh, and even when it comes to, to mobile, um, more and more of us are spending more and more time on this device right here. And when we look at it, it's like, you know what? We're, we're making purchases. We're actually sending emails. I spend more time on my mobile device, my smartphone than I actually do in front of my, my computer, my laptop. Why? Because it's just easy access. So imagine if you're, you have a website and your website is not mobile friendly. Um, if people are trying to buy something from you and, and, and it really is not easy, it's not something easy to navigate. Um, and maybe your business can actually boom just by maybe updating your website to where people can actually access a lot of the things that you're selling, the items that you're selling online. Um, you know, a simple, a simple upgrade to your website would actually be beneficial, um, you know, to make it, uh, you know, I guess, uh, mobile friendly. And that's one of the main things that I think that what's happening with a lot of business technology is just going to continue to evolve. It's going to get better and better and better. And we just need to make sure that your business is at the forefront, uh, whether you have a brick and mortar, whether you have an e-commerce um, site, or if you are actually transitioning into both. And we'll talk a little bit about some businesses that have actually done that. Um, so if you look at the brick and mortar sales, uh, um, this is about two years old, but if you look at the numbers um, where this is actually extremely, you know, what great numbers because people still want to get out of their house. People are still looking to go out. I, I mean, during the long weekend, I know people that were going to the beach because people, you know what, are tired of being stuck in their home. So imagine if your business gives people an opportunity to come in and, and probably buy online and pick up at your at your store, your brick and mortar. Um, so when people ask me, well, Orlando, that, that's great, but how do I get them here? Uh, one of the main things I've been encouraging people to do is, you know what, just do video. Do a video of, of your location. 
um, and interact with, with, with your staff and let them know that it's a safe place for them to come in, um, inform them of what it is. I know that what some uh, doctors and, and beauticians have been doing is that they tell their clients, hey, you know, wait outside in the car and we will call you when it's your turn so that you don't have to sit around and, and wait. So there are different ways to actually generate um, business. Um, you just have to be creative. You just have to be at the forefront because if, if people right now, I, I know a lot of beauticians that they they were trying to figure out what was the best way for them to actually keep their clients. And, and sometimes it's creating a video. Sometimes it's just creating a chat. I mean, listen, this is what we're doing right now when it comes to communication. So the numbers make sense to, to actually have a brick and mortar, but now it's how do you actually morph them and put them together so that you actually turn your brick and mortar into a, a, an actual platform where people can come in and access and look. So if you look at all of the numbers there, or even the flow of this, the customers and how they buy and so forth. And once again, I'm not going to go into too much of this, but you know what? We're, we're used to going out. We're people of, of, of habit. So one of the main things that you have to keep in mind, people want to support the brick and mortar. People want to go out and shop, but some people are, are scared. So you have the 50-50, you have those that are scared, you have those that are being cautious, and then you have some that are fearless. But how do you come in and relay that information? So maybe it, it's a post uh, it's a video that you're highlighting, you know, what your, your your store, if you're a restaurant, you know, how is the food being prepared? What cautions, um, cautions are you taking? Precautions, actually. What is it that you're doing in order to come in and bring people in to the forefront? And then how easy are you making it for people to order online uh, for items? I, I know that for me, that's another thing. I order online and if I have access to pick something up the same day, it just makes it easier. Listen, what Amazon has done, it's actually created that 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 prime um, aspect to where if we order something, we expect to have it delivered in two days. So imagine if you, as a business, you come in and, and you may have same day delivery or same day pickup uh, for items that you may have at the store, but you have to let your customers know what it is that you're doing. And right now, you don't have to do a long, extensive video of, of coming in and just talking and talking you know what, uh, go in and do little snippets and let people feel reassured that all of the things that they used to do that they can still do because coming into your place of business, whether it's picking up an item that they actually can order online or coming into your place of business and just coming in and knowing that, you know what, that your, your staff, you know what, they, they're wearing masks, you know, I, I'm not the type of person that I like to go out and wear masks and so forth. But the other day I went to Chick-fil-A and I went to the line and they said, please, please place your mask on as our employees, you know, what, uh, wear their mask. And I went in and I complied. And the reason being is that because at the end of the day, I want to be able to be mindful and follow, you know, what definitely um, the, um, the rules for a business. But if you let people know, people are going to be welcoming because at the end of the day, we're all in this together. So if you look at the, the bricks versus clicks, so, so e-commerce, yeah, it's open 24 hours, uh, seven uh, days a week. But I will be very candid with you. If I know that your business is open from nine to five and I'm actually going to talk to an actual human being, I will be in la la land because in this day and age, all of the automation that's out there, it just doesn't make it for me. I just don't get it. I don't like it. I'd rather talk to a human being. And that's the advantage that a lot of brick and mortars have. Um, you know, it's the instant gratification that we can come in and buy something from you. But if you have a location, so let's say if, if I call you and I ask for a specific item and, and you don't have it, um, I may not call you. I, I would probably prefer going into um, the, my smartphone and looking to see if you do have the product and if you have it on hand and I can order it and then go to your place of business and pick it up. That's what I'm going to do, because then I'm not going to have to call and find out specifically if you do have the item or, or not. But but I will tell you that uh, a lot of times I see some of the businesses that are doing promotions that people that come in and pick up. Um, I know a lot of companies that are in the food industry. Uh, what they're doing is, is that they're giving people an incentive to come in, pick up their food. Uh, reason being is, hey, if you come in and you take out, uh, we're going to give you a free uh uh, cheesecake, or we're going to give you a, an appetizer, anything that's creative, uh, but you have to order online. So if you make the process for people um, that's seamless, 
uh, whether once again, e-commerce or, or brick and mortar, it's going to be so much easier for you to come in and see how they correlate and how they mesh. And, and if some of you are already doing that, you know, kudos to you and congratulations. Um, but I know that for me in this day and age, if I'm looking for something and I want something quick and fast, I have to be mindful and realize that I have to look to see number one, where I can find it. And number two, where I can actually pick it up. And, and I may yeah. do some research. I may do some research and I may actually look at it's some of the people awesome. and, and what it is that I can definitely do uh, moving Maybe. forward. To, to assist and help uh, when it comes to doing certain things. So I will tell you, um, when I see it at a lot of the businesses moving forward, once they start correlating these things together, it is an exciting adventure to see how some businesses are actually looking to, to scale down, but it didn't affect their actual, um, I guess, um, overhead because they realize how to actually morph them together. So, so the big thing right now that we've been talking about is the omni-channel strategy. So one of the main things with the omni-channel strategy is definitely how can you tie everything together, making it something that's seamless, um, making it something that's going to be easy for people to come in. And like I said, as customers, right now what Amazon is doing, you can order online, they have it shipped to your home, and instead of having to go and, and ship it back or, or have it picked up and so forth, they're giving access. So if you buy something from Amazon, I know that they have locations in Kohl's where you can actually return your items if you're not happy and walk away. Because once again, we are people of instant gratification. So even having a physical location, and for those of you that have brick and mortars, it's just an experience for people to still come in um, and, and experience what it is that you're presenting. So I always encourage businesses to highlight their, their website and, and make it a mirror image of what their actual um, uh, brick and mortar, the retail place looks like, so that when people can come in, they can actually see what's what's happening, what's moving forward. I actually have one of the uh, students from uh, one of the programs that I teach. He actually is uh, working with uh, Invictus. And what, what they're doing is that they started doing videos and, and highlighting the customer experience by way of coming in and showing what the customer's experience would be coming into a retail store. So imagine if you did something like that to let customers come in and see your brick and mortar um, experience the same way, pretty much how people can navigate an e-commerce site. Imagine if your, your website, you know, it were to do something like that and people would feel like they're the, your actual store and that they can come in and order items and then go to your place of business either and pick it up or that you can have that shipped to them. And, and I think it would be a great opportunity. So I'm not gonna go too much into some of these traits because I definitely wanna go ahead and answer questions. Once again, if you have any questions, you know, definitely uh, use the, um, the uh, chat um, and we'll be more than happy to assist and help you. Uh, but these are some of the traits that, that retail models uh, and what it is that they're doing. So a successful uh, brick and click retailer, they're gonna use their online and offline um, relationship pretty much stores in order to come in and bridge that gap to give people that experience. For those of us that want items delivered to our homes and those that actually want to order items online and go and pick them up, uh, they're giving them that access. So um, that's one of the things that, that I thoroughly enjoy to have that choice. I can buy something online and I can pick it up your, uh, at your store. No matter what it is, if it's something that I definitely need, that's one of the main things right now. And if you look at everybody from Walmart to, um, to Target, to every of these stores, they are actually allowing you to come in and pick up items and it's convenient and they'll tell you when it's ready and you'll receive an email. Um, so for those of you that are brick and mortars and you're not um, taking down people's emails, that's one of the things that you definitely need to start doing by way of creating a plan. But something as easy as online, you know, with buying online and picking up at the stores, um, people, you know, what love that opportunity. And once again, people that are dying to get out of their house, you know, the augmented in-store browsing uh, to what I was talking about earlier. You know, we've become so accustomed, you know, to coming in and, and just looking and, and shopping, you know, the window shopping that we used to do in the past now has become online shopping. So what you come in, what happens with a lot of uh, brick and mortars and, and the limitations is that the experience is not the same. I can look at your website and when I look at your website, I can see what it is that you do as a business, but virtually I'm not actually looking at your place of business and the experience that makes me feel like if I'm actually in there. Um, so that's one of the main things that you may want to do, enhance that with, within your website um, and inventory consistency. One thing that I will tell you 
that for me, if I go in and I buy something and all of a sudden I get an email or I want to buy something and it says that you have a certain quantity of that item. And now when I go to buy it, it's not there. Uh, then for me, it's like, yeah, you know what customer service there is. It's not, it's not front and center. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe having a, a good inventory within your business that you have items that you can actually, I can pick up and say, yes, we have five an inventory. We have 10, uh, we're out of stock, but we can order it and have it for you, uh, in a day or two. Those are things that actually will act benefit your business. Um, either as a, a e-commerce um, or brick and, and click. But if you can morph that together, it's going to be ideal for the sustainability of your business. Um, and this is another thing, the uh, flexible return and exchange policy. However, you make it easier for people to exchange things, uh, no questions asked. Um, and of course, you have to use your own um, you know, uh, guidance when it comes to stuff like that, your own judgment, because I know people that have come in and tried to exchange things that they probably wore 50, 50 times. But as a business owner, what is it that you're doing and can you do to make that exchange policy a little bit easier? Can I buy something at your store and can I actually exchange it? Um, will it actually be delivered to me? Can I go and pick it up? Um, the happier you make me as a customer, um, the happier I will be. Listen, there's a lot of customers out there that are very consistent. I've had the same cell phone number since 1998. I don't deviate. I'm loyal when it comes as to a customer. So you treat me with, with kindness and you treat me with that same you know uh, respect that I treat you, then you're going to have a customer for life. And I, in turn, will be the one endorsing you and talking about your business. Once again, uh, the stunning showrooms, um, if you have a great showroom, if you're in the jewelry business, um, whatever it is that you're doing, come in and highlight some of that. Maybe you may want to have a live video um, and, and, and show people what your showroom looks like, what your business looks like in the inside. You can engage a lot of uh, customers by way of just bringing them into your, your, your home. Um, I know that in this day and age, when it comes to, to a brand, when we believe in that brand, we take ownership of that brand and we become the advocates and the ambassadors for these brands. And sometimes having a nice showroom that you can actually show people something that you can probably put online a video, or even, you know, it's something that makes it a little bit more interactive. That's what a lot of businesses are doing now. And when I say the in-store store discount, I'm not talking about, you know, becoming the bargain basement special. What I'm talking about is getting people in the door. As I mentioned earlier, I mean, I, I order from some restaurants and sometimes they, they come in and they say, hey, listen, you know what, if you pick it up, we're going to give you X, um, you know, a, an appetizer, what have you, give an incentive for me to get out of, of, of my house. But I think that once you come in and bring people into your place of business, uh, once again, you don't want to cheapen the brand. What you want to do is give people an opportunity to come in and buy. Um, I know that there's uh, people that actually love the coupons. They love the discounts. Uh, they love anything that's going to get them coming back to um, your place of business. Uh, but the one thing I will tell you is that you have to make sure that everything that you're doing, that it's going to uh, ensure the success of your business. Once again, don't overthink it. You can't don't come in and think you have to implement each and everything that we're talking about today. This is more so doing things in phases and saying, you know what, Orlando, you're talking about website. My website is pretty antiquated. It's not, you know, mobile friendly. So I'm going to start with that. Okay. Give yourself permission to start with that phase. Then the second phase, you may decide, Hey, we're going to create a couple of videos. We're going to do a couple of things to be more interactive. So you give yourself that permission because then what you see here, uh, Bonavos, uh, one of the things that they did, they actually started online. They started online and the customer experience was phenomenal. So what they did was that they went in and turned, you know, they turned their online business into a, a brick and mortar. So they took a leap um, and they went offline. And now what they did, they, they actually started complementing one another. That's why I think it's extremely important as business owners to make sure that what you do moving forward, that whatever you're going to do, give people uh, an experience that's different. Listen, this is your business. And at the end of the day, you run your business how you choose to uh, run it to ensure the success 
Um, the one thing that I will tell you is that more and more businesses right now are, are taking the route of the online experience. Um, very few businesses actually created a brick and mortar because they were online. So, so one of the key things that you have to look at is when it comes to e-commerce, uh, to anything uh, that you're selling online, uh, people will become dedicated. Like I said, I am a dedicated uh, consumer. Uh, years ago, I actually um, bought into the uh, Dollar Shave Club and I was paying $9.99. Um, and two years later, I sat back and I realized, oh, listen, I keep accumulating all of these uh, razors and I'm not shaving uh, as often as I, I was uh, going to or as I did. So I think that one of the main things that you have to do as a business owner is look to see what you can actually do to attract customers that are loyal, that are dedicated, and that will continue buying from you because you have actually created a platform that we feel welcome. You created a platform that we come in and the customer experience, you know what, it correlates with the uh, online experience. I think that one of the, the issues that we're, we're facing with a lot of, uh, of, a lot of um, businesses is the customer experience, you know, you talk to someone on the phone, they're phenomenal. And then when you go to the place of business, you're dealing with someone else that pretty much you sit back and I'm like, eh, you know what, I want to talk to so-and-so because it goes back to, to that loyalty, that relationship. So the best way to transform your brick and mortar um, and is really, you know what, how to correlate things, uh, make your website a priority. And like I said earlier, go ahead and do these in phases. Do not feel as though you have to do all of this at the same time. Uh, people are doing three things while they're at home. They're in front of the refrigerator, uh, deciding what it is that they're going to eat. They're in front of the TV, binge watching, um, or they're in front of the uh, computer ordering items. Uh, so my thing is, is take the time that you have now, if you're at home, to create a game plan that's going to go beyond, uh, you know, prepare for, 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 for the worst you know what, but stay positive, stay motivated um, and, and stay encouraged and, and build an online community. I don't know how many of you have, as business owners have actually come in and expanded your online community and attended webinars such as these um, and actually spoken to other businesses. You can't build a business sitting down waiting for things to happen. Sometimes we have to take that initiative ourselves. Um, connect the dots with email. Um, if you have not been gathering emails, you know what, start doing that. For those of you that probably have a brick and mortar and haven't heard from your clients in a while, pick up the phone, talk to them and, and don't come in and try to sell something. Just talk to them and, and actually find out how it is that they're doing, uh, what's going on, what's happening because people love that loyalty and, and they need to be made to feel special. Um, definitely allow online orders um, and simplify the customer experience. If it's gonna be tedious to come in and do something, listen, I've been fighting with my internet provider for, for years. And, and, and the only reason why I haven't changed is because I don't have choices. And if I did have a choice, I would be over and done with. Listen, right now I'm in my parents' house in my old room, sitting down doing this presentation because my internet was flaky yesterday. So I've been fighting going back and forth. And, and I think that one of the main things that if you simplify life uh, for your customers, your customers are going to stay loyal um, and look at how you can actually create opportunities. The one thing that I will tell you, and this is what I said to myself, and this is what I told a lot of the businesses, I'm not closing. I am not shutting down. I am going to figure out a way how to continue staying in the game. If I have to come in and make changes, if I have to come in and transform anything within my business, I, I will do that. And I'm more than happy to do that. The one thing that you can't do is give up. Um, I know that the, uh, the town of Miami Lakes does a phenomenal job in promoting a lot of the, the brick and mortars, you know, coming in and, and, and supporting the, the actual um, businesses there within the community. And I think that, that for me, I, I value things like that. And one of the things that I, I encourage a lot of the businesses out there, don't stay silent. Let us know what it is that you need. How can we help you? You know, um, Bank United has done a phenomenal job in helping and working with, you know, the small businesses. Uh, one thing I will tell you, um, and not because they are actually um, here, um, but um, a lot of the small businesses that, that I work with, and one of the things that I kept saying, hey, listen, these large banks, they're great, they're awesome, but you need a small community bank that will take an interest in you and your business. And I know a lot of businesses that have actually shifted and changed because you have to keep in mind that you have to be made to feel special, unique as a business owner. So imagine 
how your customers must feel and how your customers actually want to feel the exact same way. So, so I would encourage you to come in and look at how you can transform your business, um, maybe offer things online, e-commerce, um, talk to, to your, your, your customers, talk to your, to your actual clients as well, and talk to other businesses to see what you can do moving forward. You know, so, so we're going to open it up to questions. Uh, once again, I didn't want to dive too much into uh, the content within the uh, presentation because I actually wanted to answer more questions. So anything that's live that you're, you're asking, I'm more than happy to, to assist. I don't know if there's anything that's come up in the, in the chat. Um, check to see. Uh, feel free to ask any questions of myself, of, of Jerry. Jerry sent me the email of the uh, presentation that he had done. And I was telling him, oh, well, great minds think alike. Um, so I think that that's one of the main things we want to make sure that as business owners, that you don't feel like you're alone, that you don't feel isolated, but that you actually have, uh, you know, a partner, you know, not only with with Bank United, with uh, Town of Miami Lakes, um, and, and also with me, I'll be more than happy to. And listen, and thank you to everyone that actually emailed me prior uh, questions um, and that I was able to answer and so forth. The overall goal is making sure that we actually continue as a community uh, moving forward and how we can help. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free. I don't know if if in any of the live feeds there's any questions that are being asked, uh, but, but feel free to ask questions. More than happy to assist and help any way we possibly can. And if you don't have any questions, I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything. If Jerry, you want to say anything, or you know what, we're going to open up the uh, the screen, not the floor, but the screen in order for 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 anyone to to uh, share. And I want to thank everyone that attended, uh, participated. Once again, you know, it's a privilege to come in and and empower and educate, and and I get a lot of feedback. And we design and create different programs depending on the needs of the community and the small businesses. Um, I, I might hand the floor for a minute, if it's okay, to um, Clara Diaz-Leal. Um, I see her on the screen. I, I don't know if you can speak, Clara, but if you can, uh, love your, uh, your insights on, uh, you know, kind of Orlando's presentation. I thought he was, uh, he was spot on. It, it really is a lot about mindset, and it was funny how many parallels you know, we shared um, in our discussions, but um, but Clara, you're very much plugged in with Steve, obviously, in the Miami community, and uh, just um, maybe some thoughts um, that you could share this morning. Yeah, Orlando, um, your presentation was spot on. In fact, um, I happened to be on the board of a tourist board in another uh, town, uh, a neighboring community, and everything that you spoke about uh, are things that are being discussed actively so uh, this is really good information to put forth. I think it becomes um, easier than we think once you get started. And you talked about mindset shift. So if, if we can think about that as the number one priority, then the rest of it sort of paves the way. Uh, for example, you talked about, uh, you know, sort of uh, ordering online and, and picking up. And, and, and making it fun and, and changing up, uh, you know, your scenery to make it welcoming. Um, this is not going to get easier unless we make it so. It, it is like the new normal. So it, for our clients, it's been more about what can you do differently? And the other thing that I would say is, if this happens again, how, is, how can you maintain your new normal? So these things aren't only important for right now, they're really important for in the future uh, because it could be that this disruption becomes a permanent disruption that people prefer to shop that way and that people prefer to leverage these new tools. We found that we could stand up you know, uh, and put everybody to work. You said you work at home, but a lot of people had never worked at home. Now they like it. So that's a disruptor and people may never wanna go back to an office. So these things are, are so intuitive. Uh, and my ask for everyone is to analyze their business plans and to see how they can expand and change and pivot their business uh, to be and stay relevant. And so you know, I'm glad that you said morning. that, Clara, because you know, it's funny, a lot of the businesses that I work with, the one thing that they figured out now, they can work from home they can run a business effectively from home 
and eliminate a lot of overhead. You know, we, we did a webinar a couple of weeks ago, take your business virtual. And one of the things, once again, the mindset, well, how do I know what my employees are doing? I'm like, well, if you are that type of, of business owner, you may not have the right employees if you actually are looking over their shoulders. But but I do believe that right now, to, to your point, this is conversations that we need to have because this is the new norm. And comfort wise, people have become comfortable. I was talking to someone yesterday with a lot of the webinars and workshops that I do. Right now, more and more of the organizations that I work with, they're attracting people from all parts of, of the United States with the webinars. So their numbers are going to go up as opposed to coming in a, a and doing an impersonal, you know, a more of a personal type of webinar or workshop. And those are still going to happen, but I have to continue planning for my business. And I was ready to do a lot of these things before people were even thinking of, of, of right. going live on Zoom and so forth. I've been doing this for years. So, so to your point, uh, yes, you know what, you have to keep planning and, and you need to keep looking at and the exciting thing for me is I love to create. I sit back and talk to a lot of business. Hey, did you think about this? Maybe you want to do this. Maybe you want to do that. And it gets exciting because it reminds me of when I started my business um, 11 years ago and that the excitement for a lot of business owners that they, you know, remember the, the commercial years ago, it's time to make the donuts. It's the same thing, monotonous. This doesn't give you an opportunity to be monotonous. You have to be thinking on your feet and, and going back to your first love when you became a, a business owner when you started. So thank you for sharing that. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. And, and listen, we are gonna share the presentation um, at the end of the day uh, with uh, with the, the Miami uh, Lakes, the town of Miami Lakes, so they can definitely share. Um, and I will tell you, listen, when it comes to your website, um, I know that everybody's out there and they're looking to do something, you know, that's going to work for them. I know people that actually have built a website using Wix, uh, WordPress. One thing that I will tell you is that um, as you continue scaling your business uh, and trying to go to the next level, those are great for people that are starting out. Uh, the one thing is, that I don't want to look at a website that the bottom, it says courtesy of Wix. Um, you know, I, I want to be able to come in and say, okay, what's the best thing? I would encourage you to talk to, to a web designer. Um, that's one of the questions that people were asking. Um, talk to someone that actually knows, but talk to someone that's not just going to come in and build the website for you, but that they're actually going to be a partner with you. A lot of the clients and customers that I work with, it, it's a partnership. It's a relationship that you build because you take a, a, an interest in that business for the purpose of scaling. Um, but I will tell you that you have to have these conversations and there's a lot of phenomenal web designers out there that would actually even look at your website. Um, and right now I know people that are looking to enhance what it is that they're doing and they're, they're talking, you've got choices. What you don't want to do is sit idle and wait. And, and you know what, do yourself a, a, a favor and check your website on your smartphone and see you know, um, if it's actually compatible. But make sure that what you do is that you need to take advantage of, of what's out there and uh, having a nice uh, website. There are platforms, there are themes that you can actually purchase by that people can actually use. I know a lot of people are using, you know, Shopify and all these other, um, you know, uh, platforms in that in order to sell online. And if that's what's going to work for you, then that's great. But I will tell you that make yourself, um, you know, available and have conversations. And this is what I want more so with these presentations, have a dialogue, start having a conversation and say, hey, listen, I've been doing this for a while. Maybe I need to shift. Maybe I need to change. I've been doing this for the exact same time for seven years, 10 years, and maybe it's time to try something different, try something new uh, that's going to assist and help you moving forward. Just don't overthink it. If I were to do a, a, an actual survey of how many people are online, how many are overthinkers, a lot of us would raise our hands to say, yeah, you know, overthink it, but that's not what you really wanna do. What you wanna do is that you wanna actually, you can overthink, give yourself permission. You can give your, yourself permission to be discouraged, to feel like, you know what, I don't know what's happening, but you need to pick yourself right up and you need to move forward and realize that at the end of the day, whatever it is that you need to do to stay in business, do it and realize you're not navigating this by yourself. You do have a lot of people within the community that they're willing to assist and help you. Um, once again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. More than happy uh, to assist any way that I possibly can, but don't overthink it. You know, take, take some action. 
Um, and, and I will tell you one thing that, that I've seen within the town of uh, Miami Lakes, they're committed to the brick and mortars. They're committed. Listen, I live in Miami Gardens and my hangout spot is Miami, um, is the town, uh, Miami Lakes. Um, I go to a couple of, of, of shops there and, and for coffee and meetings and so forth. And I'm, I'm anxious for all of this to just go back to, the, to, to, to normal. But I also realize that I have to make do with how things are right now and adjust accordingly. So, so, so if there's any other questions, if anybody else wants to share, please and thank you, Clara, for, for um, your, your insight and definitely Jerry as well. You know, I greatly appreciate it. Um, and connect with people. Take this time to connect with people online. LinkedIn, you know, how many of you have actually not updated your profile? Go in and take the time to do the things that you didn't have time before, but now you have uh, time to do. Just do not sit idle. Be proactive. Orlando, I do see one question on the chat. Okay. The question is, how can a, how can a commitment to shop local benefit everyone in the community? And listen, one thing is, listen, in this day and age, and this is what I keep telling a lot of, of people, I do a lot of presentations on college campuses. And what I will tell you is that a lot of uh, students right now are getting degrees um, and, and a lot of large corporations, you know what, um, are, are not the, the norm. Right now, the mom and pops, the small businesses, we are the backbone of the economy. We're the ones that are creating jobs. We're the ones that are actually saturating the economy. So buying local is going to further enhance your community and strengthen the community as a whole. Why? Because it brings in more business. It brings in, you know what, um, better um, opportunities. And for me, I am committed to my community because this is where I live at. But I also come in and my commitment is to the, the store owner. So one of the things as a, as a store owner, let yourself be known, build a relationship. I love to do business with people that I like, people that I respect and people that shares my same level of integrity. So a lot of times that's why I say, give yourself a voice if you haven't done it in the past, create a video, post it online, uh, do a welcoming and, and let people know that you're still in business, that you're open for business and what are the measures that you're taking in order to ensure that people feel welcome, safe, you know, whatever it is that you have to do, definitely add your personality, uh, add your wit, but I think that that's one of the main benefits for everyone in the community, because the one thing you don't want to see is you don't want to come in and start seeing signs that say, you know what, lease, 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 because unfortunately business has started closing down. So I think that as, as a community, we need to definitely shop local and we need to support the local businesses. Um, and if you give me an opportunity to order online, you know what, that's another added value because people will support local communities. Um, and I know that that's one of the main things that you need to focus on. How are you gonna make that experience for a customer to keep coming back and how are they gonna get to know you in order to support you? I do what I do because I know a lot of businesses out there that need help uh, and need a sounding board. So the one thing that you have to do is just take advantage of it. So, so I think that's one of the main benefits. Shop local. Shop local, um, support your local businesses, and let's support one another with the resources that are out there. And if you find information, don't hoard it. Pay it forward. Pay it forward because that's going to be a great opportunity for you to scale and grow your business, to build relationships. Um, any other questions that you see there, Brandon? Um, if not, um, yeah, I don't know if anybody I see wants question, um, via Facebook comments. Um, Rosalind asks, what is it that you see wrong with Wix? Oh, I don't see anything wrong with Wix. I think that Wix is great. I think that it's a great opportunity. What my thought is, is that when I see a lot of businesses that they build a website with Wix, they look at it and you look at the bottom, their, um, the clicks, everything goes to the Wix uh, website. So uh, in essence, what it does is that if you click at the bottom, it goes to their social media page. It goes to their um um, their actual website. So in essence, you're building your, your uh, platform or your website and promoting what Wix does. So I say that because I know they have different upgrades that you can definitely use. What you want to be able to be seen as an actual business that you're taking serious. Um, and there's, like I said, there's nothing wrong with using Wix. My thing is, is just making sure that when you look at it, people are seeing you. You don't want to take away your image, your brand, and give it to someone else 
because if if I go to your website and I click and go to another site, it's going to be hard for me to stay there and, and, and shop and buy and so forth. So there is nothing wrong. Once again, there's nothing wrong. Uh, my comment was sure, mainly focus on the aspect where a lot of businesses, they're building it and they don't look at those little things, those details. Um, so just be mindful of the details uh, of stuff like that. You know, Orlando, um, one thing I'll say, uh, just to sort of sum it up, I think we've got a few more minutes here, um, but I get a lot of questions. We get a lot of questions on this, and that is sort of, um, you, you've almost got two economies right now. You've got the gig economy. Um, you mentioned, of course, Amazon, Google, NVIDIA, um, companies, Apple, uh, just announced a four for one split. Um, all these companies are on fire. Um, because this pandemic has just accelerated um, and fed all of those businesses. And then you've got, you know, a lot for all the, the companies doing so well, this continental divide of companies um, in lodging, airlines, you mentioned the restaurant space um, and, and the broader real estate markets, um, you know, while residential is doing very well, um, you know, you're starting to see some spots on the commercial side um, that are, you know, they're obviously uh, going to contract or have to contract. You know, to me, um, businesses always figure it out. And, you know, we sort of try to anticipate, um, you know, where we think it's going to go and it never quite goes there. I guess the, the um, sort of intellectual curiosity I, I'd have around all that um, is, um, is, is, you know, sort of the uh, perseverance, if, if um, to sum it up in a word, that you know that that the American people have, and that and the small business owners have, frankly. Um, so I, I think that that broader um, you know spectrum of companies right now um, that are unfortunately you know going to have to close and go out, um, and you know there's a lot of them. Um, they'll reopen in a different um, business, or they'll figure out. Um, you know, a lot of restaurants have gone to this ghost kitchen concept and it's working and there's a lot that are going to do, you know, do fine through this, um, this pivot, this, this transition. But I think, you know, the broader real estate markets um, have yet to really um, settle. And uh, that's going to be a, um, a shift to your point. Um, back to the word that you used and I used, and that is business owners entrepreneurs, um, you know, we all have to have a mindset shift right now because, you know, I, I, I think um, people say, well, gosh, this is, you know, I hope we get a vaccine within the next, you know, three or four months or six months. We could be, um, we could be in this for a while and, and we don't know the time frame. So, you know, um, that, that's just sort of a comment or just some comments I wanted to throw in because it sort of ties to everything you've, uh, you know, you've been talking about as well. Yeah. And one of the things that, that, that I will tell you that you're, you have to give yourself permission to be creative. Uh, listen, I know restaurants and what they did was that they, they're not using uh, Uber Eats. They're not using any of the apps, uh, Postmates and so forth. And what they did was that they actually enhanced their, their website. Uh, they actually enhanced it to where their employees are doing all of the delivery. Are doing the delivery. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. So, so, so something like that, it's like, just be creative at, at the end of the day, don't go for the norm and say, Oh, listen, I'm just going to go ahead and download and, and, and use X, Y, Z. What can you create and how can you actually have that conversation? That's why I think it's extremely important to have dialogue with other trusted advisors, you know, um, other business owners, you know, your, your banker, you know, what your, your attorney, um, you know, definitely accountant, you know, marketer, um, any mentors that you have and find out ways to come in and, and move forward. Because I think that the ideas are here. It's just that we don't actually um, share them. We don't talk about them and we don't process them. And, and then go back to look at what you had, maybe when it was your business plan and what you thought you were going to be doing. And I know a lot of people that have actually found answers by way of revisiting their business plan to things that they were going to implement that they never had the time to implement. Um, so um, take advantage of, of the opportunities that are there. Uh, just don't sit idle, like I said before. Don't sit down and wait. Uh, what you want to do is definitely be proactive um, and take the initiative. The, um, the, the other thing I'd just share quickly, uh, 
is I, I sit on the um, the Broward workshop um, in um, in Broward County, um, a, a group of, a, a group of business leaders, 100 business leaders and, and CEOs in Broward. Um, and we had a discussion this morning um, around the economic state of Florida. Uh, and, you know, we still are a net migration state. Um, and we're, you know, we were gaining momentum um, previous to all this, um, this COVID-19, um, but people want to live here, work here, and, and do business here, um, you know, for all the obvious reasons, uh, you know, tax friendly and so on and so forth. So I, I think that that, um, you know, will continue um, to uh, to drive the Florida economy, which is you know uh, obviously been traditionally very healthy, albeit tourism um, is uh, is tough right now. So you know we uh, you know we should count ourselves um, thankful and fortunate, obviously, to live in uh, in such a great state. Now, in total agreement. And listen, we're resilient. We go through hurricanes, you know, <laughs> we live through hurricanes and you know what, we're a resilient community. I think that this is just where we need Northeast to get together. Northeast is actually getting the worst part of that storm. Um, you know, I think it impacted them um, far worse than us. So uh, yeah, you know, case in point. Exactly, so so thank you for sharing. So listen, thank you everybody. Um, great opportunity. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, you definitely reach out to the town of uh, Miami Lakes you know, um, we are going to make the uh, presentation available on their their website um, as well. Um, and once again, I want to thank everyone that put this together. Uh, Bank United, uh, thank you so much, uh, Steve, uh, Jerry. Uh, thank you to uh, the town of Miami Lakes and uh, the Economic, you know, uh, Development Committee uh, for all your hard work and so forth. And I want to thank everybody that participated as well. And thank you, Janet, uh, for interpreting. You know, um, yeah. So make sure you thank yourself. Uh, for everything and thank you everybody else who participated. Thank you very much. I also do want to thank the EDC at uh, the town of Miami Lakes um, for putting this together and uh, and we do appreciate our partnership and uh, it's uh, it's our home uh, it's our home base so uh, you know we're uh, you know we're certainly happy to be a part of the Miami Lakes community. Yeah and, and thank you Elizabeth as well um, for all the emails and uh, communication and so forth. I greatly appreciate it.